Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles, and today we're gonna to talk about the basics of setting your ring end gaps when you're putting a big bore kit or just any kind of piston in your motorcycle. Now, this may seem like a small detail, but details matter when it comes to building motors. The sum total of all those details can add up to either a really good running engine or a not so great running engine, even right after you rebuild it. So we're gonna go through the basics of setting these ring gaps when you're putting your new pistons in your cylinders. Now for the most part, pistons come with three ring rails basically. And the bottom is gonna be the oil rails and the little oil expander here. And for the most part, you don't have to worry about these. These have a minimum gap. And to my knowledge, I've never ran across any where I had to set the gap on these. Some of you hot rod guys out there, you may be saying, oh, I have like four and five rings and this and that. There's a lot of variables in this, but we're gonna talk about basically street oriented pistons and rings. Now, that leaves you with two more rings and there's gonna be a top and a bottom most of the time. So make sure you read your instructions. They'll have a little mark, like a dot or maybe a bevel on it that connotates which one is the top or the bottom. In our case, you can see these are kind of different colors. This is much darker and this is a little more silver. That's telling us which one is top and bottom ring. And that's important because most of the time there's different gaps for the top ring and the bottom ring. Generally speaking, the bottom ring has a little bit less of a gap. Too tight of a gap can be bad. It can score up the inside of your cylinder wall. Like too big of a gap, there can be blow by that goes by. So it's important to get these gaps right. Now, what is that gap? Again, that will depend on the piston and cylinder kit that you have and what that application is. Especially if you get into like nitrous or turbo applications, they're a much different set of rules for ring gaps. But on the instructions with your piston, it should have a range of a gap. This is an SNS setup right here. They have in their instructions the range of gap. It's anywhere from 20 thousandths to 24 thousandths. And how we're gonna measure that is you're gonna need a feeler gauge or a set of feeler gauges like this to measure that gap. When you have to actually widen that gap, there's a couple ways to do that. There are fancy ring cutters, there are, you could use an air tool, or you could just use a file which I highly recommend, especially if you're not used to doing this. Using something like an air tool to cut down these rings, a really good chance you'll cut too much. You can't put it back, you can only take it off. So use a file, go nice and slow and take your time. So how we're gonna measure this is, we're gonna put the ring in the cylinder, but you just don't wanna slap it in there anywhere because more than likely, if you put it in there, the ring could be tipped or not flat and that will affect the size of that gap. So the way to get this nice and flat is to take your piston, hold it basically by the wrist pin and push it down in there so everything's nice and flush. Now I know I'm perfectly set up around that cylinder. I'm not tipped or anything like that. And from there, you're just gonna slide your feeler gauge in that gap. Don't force it in there. If it won't go in there, then you need to take a little more off. So now that we measure that, we know we have to take some off. We're gonna take this out. And I'm gonna take my file and I only do one side. There's no reason to do both sides. I'm gonna take my file and start filing material off. This takes a little bit of time. You have to try it probably one or two times to see where you're at. It's like I said, it's better to take a little of time than take too much. When you file this off, one thing you need to be careful of is after you get going, if you look real close on the edges of these, you can see a tiny, tiny little burr start to develop where you're cutting that metal. So I like to take and just knock that abrasive edge off right there. You want that to be nice and smooth. And then, Again, we go in there, we're gonna throw our ring back in there. I'm gonna push it down, even with our piston, just right to where that wrist pin is. Put my feeler gauge back in there, and away we go. Back and forth, back and forth, until we get that perfect gap. Now, take your time, do this right. You really only get one shot. Of course, you could order some more piston rings, but why not just do it right the first time? Take your time and get it right. As always, have any questions, feel free to drop us a comment. Go work on those motorcycles.